Up-end based summing amplifier, also known as analog adder or linear combined is shown here. We want to find V out as a function of n independent input voltages, voltage sources V1, V2 up to Vn. To do that, just look at the connection from output to input. You can see that the connection is going to negative terminal, so up-amp is properly set in negative feedback mode. Assuming that the voltage supplies VDD and negative VDD are properly set, then we can make the assumption that this ideal up-amp is not saturated in a linear mode of operation. So um, I am going to make the assumption that this up-amp is not saturated in a linear mode of operation and therefore the virtual short which means that the value of b minus and b plus the voltage at the two input terminal equal to each other so uh, that is referred to as virtual short holds and therefore i can say v plus is equal to v Minus. The good thing about this is as soon as I find V plus, then I can say that's the value of V minus, which means that's the value of voltage at this node, and then I can get to V out. Now, one other thing. Uh, we have in N independent input voltages. I don't need to deal with all of them at once. I can use superposition and just assume V2 up to Vn are just short that they don't exist anymore, and just deal with V1 and find its contribution to V out. I can repeat that process for V2 up to Vn and be done with the whole thing. So let's do it for V1. In that case, if we use the superposition, uh, the circuit looks like this, assuming V2 up to Vn are not there shorted. So you will have, let me go back to uh, say uh, this color. So we will have V1, and then of course the resistor R1 is still there. And then we have uh, the connection that goes like this, R2, is grounded, so resistor, so R2 is connected to ground because we are assuming V2 is sh uh, shorted to ground. So R3 is in parallel with R2, and you can say this goes up to Rn. And finally, the connection from this node, which is the V plus, as here, still goes to the positive input terminal of op-amp, ideal op-amp. And uh, from negative input terminal, we go out as before. And you can see that we have the V out and we have the connection via RB and we have RA to ground. Remember that this voltage node, this node has a voltage that is V negative, which we are saying is effectively equal to V positive. So let's keep this in mind because we're going to use it and it's uh, super important. So we need to remember this. OK, uh, with this in mind, then one thing I can do is I can just quickly uh, look at what we have at the input of the op-amp. Since uh, op-amp is ideal, input impedance is infinite. Therefore, no current is flowing this way. So there is no current going that way. All the current coming uh, from uh, V1 through R1 goes through this parallel, parallel of these resistors. And uh, I can just simply write the voltage divider from V1 to get to V plus. Uh, let's do that. So V plus, which is effectively V minus. So, you know, uh, maybe I can do it, just do it this way. I know V negative is equal to V positive. So V minus equal to V positive. And then I can say V positive is just the result of a voltage divider. Is this resistor divided by the sum of this equivalent resistor uh, plus R1 times V1. So we have R2 parallel with R3 parallel with up to Rn. That's in numerator. And then in denominator, we have R1, this one, plus what is in numerator? That's simply a voltage division. So R3 and up to Rn. Okay. And then this whole thing is multiplied by input voltage V1. Um, now let's consider what's uh, the simpler voltage divider that we have at the output V out to V negative via RB and RA. So I can, using the same concept, I can just simply write uh, that um, V out or V ne negative is equal to RA divided by RB plus RA times V out. So it is 
there's RA divide by RA plus RB times V out. A little bit of simplification, just give us V out equal to um, 1 plus, this goes here, this goes to its denominator, it becomes effectively 1 plus RB over RA times V negative, which is here. So therefore, combining 1 and 2, I can just say, using these two, I can just simply say, combining 1 and 2, therefore, V out is simply 1 plus RB over RA times. Uh, to just uh, make it simple, let's uh, put a name to this. So let's name this one. So I'm going to use a different color. Let's name that. So let's uh, name this whole thing, R2 in parallel with R3 in parallel up to Rn. Let's name it the resistor associated with voltage V1. Just the name. Or you want to name it Rx, doesn't matter. So Rx. So in that case, we have Rx in numerator as well. So you can say Rx divide by R1 plus Rx, and then times V1, of course. So back to the same color we had, times V1. Okay, times V1. So there you go. We found uh, the equation of interest. So in this case, we were hoping to find the relationship between V out and V1. We can do the same thing, repeat the same thing for um, for V2. So instead of assuming, previously we assumed V1 was active, V2 up to Vn shorted, now assume V1 is shorted, V2 active, V3 up to Vn are shorted. So in that case, circuit would look like this, except you have V2 and R2 here, but R1 goes here. So therefore, for V2, when you write it, you will end up with an equation that looks like this. Uh, you will end up with uh, let me get rid of this part. Okay, so you would end up with V out equal to, so this portion remains as it is, so 1 plus RB over RA over RA times this portion now is, um, you will have R. 1 in parallel with C, R2 in parallel R3 becomes R1 in parallel R3. You have to remove R2 there. So in parallel with R3 and then parallel up to Rn. And in denominator, you have now instead of R1 plus, you have R2 plus. The same thing you wrote here. So this whole thing is repeated here. This whole thing in numerator. So you're let me put it this way so that there is no confusion. Plus the numerator times V2. Okay, so in summary, uh, you have this equation. You have this equation for relating V1 to V out. You have this equation relating V2 to V out. And you can repeat this for V3, V4, up to Vn. And since you're saying these equations are basically showing contribution of V1 to V out, V2 to V out, Vn to V out, so since these voltages are independent, therefore, this, uh, all, when you put them together, it's just a matter of summing these up together. So in summary, what you end up seeing is something like this. You can say, you can say V out, is equal to, so keep this common portion outside, so 1 plus RB over RA times, now let me refer to um, this portion, so maybe I use this color, so let me refer to this, this portion, this whole thing here, as alpha 1. Let me refer to this portion 
as alpha 2, and so on and so forth. So I can say alpha 1 v1 plus alpha 2 v2 plus dot 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 and up to alpha n vn. And we are done. So we, sh we showed that uh, vo, v out, is linearly uh, is a linear combination of all input voltages, assuming they are independent from each other, and uh, the coefficients uh, would be a function of the value of resistors involved, and of course there is a gain component uh, that is defined by 1 plus R V over R A at the output. Now, in, in the scenario in which R1, R2 up to Rn, they have exactly the same resistance, so instead of these guys, you put the same resistor for this input, then the interesting thing is um, this uh, alpha one, this alpha two that you have, for example, it become so in numerator you have n minus one resistors of equal size equal to each other. So it's well known that when you parallel uh, n minus one resistor that have the same value, then it becomes just simply R one over say n minus one, and uh, in denominator you have um, or R2, doesn't matter. So if the, you, you keep the value, say, R, let's say you set all these values. The point is, I'm just saying, you set all these values to R. If you do that, then when you parallel n minus 1 of them, the result is R over n minus 1. And in denominator, you have R2, which is R. And you have, again, numerator repeated, R over n minus 1. So when you simplify this whole thing, what you end up to have is 1 over n. So all I'm trying to say is, in this scenario, alpha 1 equal to alpha 2. So in that scenario, alpha 1 becomes equal to alpha 2, becomes up to alpha n. All of them become, become equal to 1 over n. And your equation simply becomes, in that spe special case, 1 over rb, 1 plus rb over ra times... Uh, times the sum of all voltages divided by the number of them. So effectively, you your circuit becomes a simple uh, analog average computer that computes the average of all n in, in, independent input voltages by summing them up and divide by n, and then multiply by 1 plus Rb over Ra, which is the gain component. And you can see that it's non-inverting. There is no negation, there is no inversion, there is no inverting. Therefore, we can refer to this circuit as a non-inverting summing amplifier for n independent voltages at input. I hope that you find this helpful.